Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for College Hill Celebrity Edition Season 2, Episode 1. Yes, I'm going to review this season. Okay, I watched Episode 1, and I'm intrigued. Okay, I'm going to do an episode by episode. So, the review for Episode 2 will be up. I don't know eventually because it's Sunday right now. I don't know if I'm going to put this out today or on Monday. But episode two review will be out on Monday. Okay. But anyway, let's get started. First thing first, I hope you came here to do something as if you need to do it. Okay. Because if you have not done it already, why not? Make sure that you have subscribed to my channel. No. Okay. To become old, J Bird, J Bird, Don, 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 and Don. Okay, y'all know to also follow me on social media at J Lee's Corner on IG, on TikTok, on Twitter. Okay, follow me. Okay, please also like the video. Why? Because why are you here if you don't want to? It doesn't make any sense. Okay, so yes, subscribe. Okay, like the video. Okay, follow me on social media. Okay, and y'all know comment in the comment section. Okay, now look. I did not watch season one's uh, celebrity edition of College Hill. I used to watch College Hill back in the day because it came on a long, long, long time ago. And when they did the little reboot, bringing on celebrities who would be, you know, go to a college for a couple weeks or whatever and earn some type of, I don't know, certificate. I was like, mm, I don't know. But watching it this season, and again, I only watched episode one in about five minutes of episode two. I was intrigued. It seems interesting. Okay. I also want to fuss people out right now. So that will happen. Anyway, this uh review, okay, Jocelyn is drama. She's ridiculous. She's foolish. Okay. Uh New York, Tiffany Pollard. She ain't backing down from you know Jocelyn's BS. Okay, Amber can see toxic vibes all up and through. And Parker out here getting rocked out. And the fact that all of that has to do with messy old Jocelyn, it gets on all my nerves, okay? So season two, it's on BT+. Plus. If you do not have BT+, Plus, I, I suggest either get BT+, Plus or and just watch my reviews, okay? Now, the cast this season, we have, you know, <clears throat> Ray J's back. Okay, and we have Tiffany New York Potter. Now, Ray J was on season one with Nene in them. It was Nene was on there. Uh, I think Lamar Odom was on there. Was it Lamar? What was Lamar? I don't know. Uh, I know um, Big Frida was on there. I can't remember everybody from season one. But, you know, he was on season one. Ray J did not pass. Okay, Ray J, how you flunk? How do you flunk out? How do you not get through? A couple weeks of college on a reality TV show. Okay. It has to be the easiest time to do stuff. Okay. But Ray J said, I wasn't focused. I was going through divorce. It was back and forth things. Okay. So I said, Ray J, you and Princess is always going through a divorce. That's, the, that's a never ending story. It's the song that never ends. It goes on and on, my friend. So, Ray J saying he did not pass last season because of the divorce. He said, but this time I'm going to focus. I say, unless you and Prinky get a divorce again, because they all, girl, every six months is a divorce announcement and a divorce take it back. Okay? It happens. It's whatever. So, but he want to come here and finish it. Mm -hmm. Uh, New York, New York had a no shot. I said, she looks so different, like she, the same, but different, okay? Anyway, Tiffany, New York Potter's here, whatever, okay? Um, now, seeing her on the show in, you know, one episode and five or second episodes, uh, she's very tame compared to how she used to be in the past, okay? She's calm, well, again, it may be because she's not, you know what I'm saying, having to battle nobody just yet, but even when she was battling Jocelyn, I still felt like it was it was a tamedness to her. We know New York was on, you know, Flavor of Love. She had her own stuff of I Love New York. She's been on a couple other reality shows. Like I think she's I think she was on Big Brother at one point in time or something. I don't know. But she's around here again to get her education. Okay. Because, you know, she wants it. Now we also have 
Orion and Amon Trooper. Now, y'all know Orion is Omarion's brother, okay? He's also the the father of Jay Iko's daughter, okay? And I've never known his music. I didn't know Orion existed until, like, you know what I'm saying, the last year or so because he was hanging out with his brother, okay? Now, we know he also has the OnlyFans. He was caught, not caught, but somebody released a footage of his OnlyFans of him doing jumping jacks naked. He has a big penis. I mean, he does. He's very zen-like. He's very, very calm. He smokes really, really good weeds. So, you know, it's like, hmm, or whatever. He's just, just real zen-like or whatever, okay? But he here, <clears throat> he seemed cool. Um, <sighs> Because he brought up how back in the day, you know, he was homeschooled because he was doing music or whatever. Now, look, he may very well be a musician. I just don't know him like that, okay? But he said because at the time, him, him being in school, he was homeschooled. He never got to go to college. So this is just an opportunity for him to do those things, okay? Now, Amon Trooper, we all know him because he's an NBA player. He won dance, Dancing with the Stars. He is married to Janet Taylor, they have two children or whatever. He here because as he said, I got business, okay? And you can never learn enough business and how to handle business. He also said, I also want to learn how to sew. I said, well, okay, that's a good idea. Now we also have, okay, Parker Posey and also Quay. Now Parker Posey, you know, Parker, that's little Katie Kyle from My Wife and Kids. Now she's grown up. She's a full adult, has her own daughter or whatever. So she, I think she's like, I'm all grown up now, and now I want to be able to go to school and get education and show my family I'm not dumb. I think they felt like she dumb, but she said she's not dumb. And I think just some people not book smart. Now, you can't be not book smart and not street life smart. Now, that's stupid. But if you are one or the other, it's okay. And she seems so sweet and innocent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Quay, uh, he be he be doing is it Kiki or TT's kids? I don't know. He be the dude in the green wig hair <clears throat> or whatever. Um, I've never been like a fan of his. I've always known who he was, you know, because I would see I would see him as the the teacher, the teacher Kiki. I think it's Kiki, the Kiki character. So I knew about that. You know what I'm saying? He also was on a tour with Tyler. When Tyler Perry did his, his little tour for his last uh, stage play, he was on that tour. Okay, and I'm not saying he not you know infamous or he's not in the business or whatever. I just don't know him like that. I don't follow his kind. Content, but I know for a fact he's a big deal in his world. Okay, so he's here too. I also like all his fedora hats. He got a hat line. I love a, a fedora. I really, really do. It is what it is. Okay. Anyway, he went out here because he said he was in college. Okay. He actually went to the, the college where season one was filmed at. He said, but at the time, because his skits was, was blowing up, he had to drop out because it was being a distraction, him being in the school, okay? And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Come back and get your education, okay? Lastly, we have Jocelyn Hernandez and Amber Rose. Mm -hmm. Now, we all know, we've discussed it a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, that a, a, an alleged fight happens between these two, okay? Now, Jocelyn gets on all my nerves. Jocelyn really believes she is the HBIC everywhere she go. And I like the fact that she's learning around here. Everybody not going to put up with your bullshit. This ain't the damn cabaret that Zeus that you film for no real reasons. Okay? This is BT. What BT plus? And these are grown adult people who have their own fans, their own uh, celebrity status. They have their own. They don't need you for shit. So you run out here, act like HBIC, and you. And to me, she came here to be a... Now, she, now wait. She did say because she was a polo Puerto Rican girl wherever she lived, you know, she could not go to college. So she was a, she, you know, she was a stripper. Stripping, okay? So she's like, this is her chance to kind of get her education. I still feel like she came here to be the HBIC, the house, and this, but there's some other people here that ain't 
letting it happen, okay? And I don't like Jonathan, not today, no ma'am. And not yesterday, and probably not tomorrow. Now, Amber Rose, some folk don't like Amber. I don't have a problem with Amber, but I don't follow her enough to know anything that she said that's problematic. Um, she seemed like a cool person who just followed the beat of her own drum. And I don't have an issue with people who follow the beat of their own drum as long as they're not bothering me and my people. Okay? Period. Now, we know that she was with Kanye West for a little bit of time. She was with uh, uh with Khalifa. You know, we, she had that, that, that boyfriend, uh... Uh, A.E. who was fucking around with Cher, okay, or whatever. She has two kids and whatnot. Amber, to me, hasn't done anything that angers me. But again, I don't follow her enough to know any crazy stuff she said. And I know there's been like little stuff here, little stuff there, but not a whole bunch for me to not like her. How I don't like Tossin, okay? And we know these two are going to battle it out, okay? Now, we seen that Tiffany and Quay were the first to get there. Again, Quay and them damn ass. Now, the fact of the matter is, okay, they didn't know, well, no one allegedly uh, knew who the rest of the cast were on each bed in this house. They had a little welcome basket and then just initials, not names, initials, okay? So, that was that. When Tiffany and Quay were the first to get there, the room they're in now, Tiffany liked that room. That wasn't her room, okay? They had her initials on a basket in a different room. Okay, her and Quay then said, oh, we should room together. We vibe, we cool, we should room together. And so they then took the name that was on the bed and put it on a different room. So this was Quay room with somebody else. They then moved Amber Rose's name to a different bed. So they switched who would share in a room with who so they could share rooms? I said, bitch, what? For why? Now, when everybody get there, Amber realized, wait, I'm a little Ray J? Did production do this? Who did that? Who would put me with, with, it, with, with Ray J? Now, when I slowly rewatched the episode to see who was in who, Quay and Ray J were rooming together. Why, you ask? It seemed like they had two women, you know, two women in, in, in rooms together and then two men in rooms together, okay? Meaning no man had to share a room with a woman or vice versa. So the fact that, and I'm like, it made me mad that producer didn't say, hey, no, we have that way because, you know, we don't want, you know, same, Ray J's a married man. You know what I'm saying? Amon's a married man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Tiffany is allegedly, was. I thought she was engaged. So, you know what I'm saying? I think Amber, I don't, I think Amber may be single. I don't know. But I feel like they did not want, you know, just the mixing of the, the genitals of different whatever okay but i'm like why would production say hey y'all can't switch rooms because we don't have any men and women sharing rooms okay but production is messy let's cause some chaos okay anyway so again they were gonna have quay and ray j room together and amber and tiffany were supposed to room together so they then moved amber into a room they took ray j name off this bed took it down to where Tiffany name was in the room with her and Amber and then put Tiffany up there with her, with Quay and I'm like it's stupid and Amber get there and she's like why am I why would the, either production be a mess or did somebody move my room because I think it, it, why would they it doesn't make any sense it doesn't now Ray J was nice like because even he like well this is weird I don't know this is okay I don't, I'm gonna be respectful I'm going to be respectful. And he told Aaron Rowe that she can have the bathroom. Okay. Because each room had a, a, a bathroom. You know, it was one bathroom. Um, So he told her, hey, you can just have that as a woman. You know, just use it. Like, I'll find the bathroom. You, you can have that or whatever. So Ray J wasn't against rooming with her. But he also was like, you know, I, <laughs> I didn't do this. Okay. But it was crazy to me. It was dumb to me. And when Amber said, well, I don't want to room with him. 
I want I would rather room. She told Quay, I would rather room with you than room with Ray J. And I'm like, why wouldn't they just say, hey, Ray J, can you and Quay switch? So the Tiffany and Amber, like, I don't get why no one, they didn't show anyone, suggests, hey, Amber does not feel comfortable with Ray J. Tiffany, can you and her, y'all were supposed to be roommates in the first damn place, okay? That aggravated me. It, it really, really did. But when she said, hey, Quay, I would rather run with you. The fact that they then said, okay, no, Tiffany then said, okay, but how about, Amber, we move your bed up here, move the couch out of here, and we can have three beds in here. What? That was so dumb. And then Quay had to, Quay was the one who went downstairs and took the bed out of Amber's room when here and brought it up. I was like, that is so dumb. The room ain't even that great. Like, anyway, it was just stupid. And all and Quay, like, I don't know why I'm the one having to move beds, but because you allowed the foolishness of you and uh, Tiffany to switch the damn rooms. <sighs> Anyway, so now Quay, Tiffany, and Amber are sharing one room. Instead of Tiffany or Quay agreeing to switch rooms with either Amber or Ray J. So it'll be two women and two men sharing a room. I'm leaving that be. Anyway, they went to orientation. Okay. And, you know, the, 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 the head lady in charge was giving them the rules of this and that and that and this. And said, hey, ain't no drugs, ain't no alcohol on campus. You cannot be around here drinking and drugging. We also have a zero, we have a zero tolerance policy for that. We also have a zero, a zero tolerance po uh, policy for fighting. I said, well... Amber and Jonathan is gonna break is gonna break that rule. We are we know that. We don't know when it's gonna happen, but sometime this season that rule of no fighting will be broken. So we know they got into a fight. Okay. Now Tiff, like we can't drink. I'm all, I came I came here inebriated. So when I come back, I will not be drunk, boss. Tiffy, that's fine. Now they were talking, they were given an assignment of having to like memorize. Was it girl? I don't know, like this either the school song, the school motto, something. I don't know. And and Amber brings up, well, this, you know, this mentions God. And I'm an atheist. I said, you know what? I I feel like I've heard her say that before. I've heard a conversation she's had with somebody about her being an atheist. I'm like, so you don't believe in God at all or do you just believe there, you know, there's more at play than just Jesus? Because when I hear the word atheist, I just think, oh, you believe in them? I don't believe. Mm. Mm -mm. So, and I know there may be different levels of people who are atheists and what they believe in. How that? Because I don't know. Because God is the head of my life. Okay, so I don't know nothing about being no atheist. But when she, I said, she ain't what? Now Quay, who said I know Amber, and I did not know that. I said I. I only heard her. I think when I heard her talk about it, I felt like she was saying. It wasn't that she, like, doesn't believe in God. I felt like she was saying it's so much more to the universe than just the one man in the sky. And I think when someone says there's more to it, that's different than saying you don't believe God exists. So, I mean, she did not explain or expound upon her atheistness, but she said, I can't, I can't. You know, do that part because you know I'm an atheist. I say, girl, God help her. Anyway, um, back at the house, we see Amber and Orion have. Orion is so handsome. Orion looks like just an older, more mature, not old, just older, a mature version of Omar. Like if Omarion, like in, like in in a in a faraway land. This would be what I'm gonna look like, okay? I'm like, he's so handsome and calm and cool and collected and so swap and double now. But Orion and Amber are talking. Amber speaks about being mixed, okay? Amber's, no, look, it was somebody in the comment section when I was discussing um, the laugh between uh, Jonathan and, and uh, Ray J. And I brought up how Amber was speaking about her being biracial. She was on a rail and she said she ain't black. Uh, my, I was like, I ain't seen any of that. I don't know. I don't know what 
she said in prior interviews. I don't know what she said earlier. What I do know is on this show, what she said was she's always been looked at as a white girl, even though she has a black mother and a white father. That growing up was hard. That, you know, because of her skin tone, that people did not believe that she was black at all. They thought her mama adopted her, um, which is not true or whatever. And so how people assume she's white because of her skin tone. I feel like when this is the funny, funny word. I don't think I've ever thought or said out loud, oh, uh, she's white. I don't think I've ever even thought to pinpoint her race or her heritage. Um and I'm trying to think, like, when Kanye was with her, did I think she was white? I can't remember. I do feel like I thought she different. Um, but seeing her here, and also when Aaron was with um, uh, um, Kanye, she never talked. So not that you would hear someone talk, you know, their race. However, I, I never heard her speak about herself. She would just always be next to him with, blind, with a blind ball head. That was it. And even once she got with Wiz Khalifa, you know, she also kind of was quiet and just in love. So to me, she's only recently, since she's been out of relationships, more vocally about who she is and this and that and that and this. But on here, we're talking to Ryan again. It was hard for me growing up. I had to fight a lot. I had to have a little switchblade in my, well, not switchblade, a kitchen knife in my backpack because people like to fight me because I was living in like a, you know, a majority, you know, black neighborhood and I looked like this. I was very, very fair skinned. And I do think back in the day, um, people had a vendetta against lighter skinned people. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Okay. So I believe she probably had a hard time growing up. And I wonder if that's the reason why she, you know, maybe has never embraced being black because of how she may feel like she was treated by black people as a kid. You know, black teenagers and black kids can be very, very mean. And she said, she said people would say mean stuff to her. So I do wonder if whatever disconnect she may have from referring to herself as a black person could be from how she was treated. And again, I don't know that lady. So don't y'all come in my car. You, why are you being so black? She, I don't know her, so leave me alone, okay? This is my opinion on the show. But she said, I am who I am. Growing up in South Philly or whatever, I still am who I am, who I am. Anyway, let's get to the grand business, okay? So there was, Tiffany came on the show, and she was talking about how her dog had died, okay? Tiffany had a dog for 13 years, the dog died like the year before. Whenever the dog died in 2021, this was was filmed sometime in 2022. So she called her dog her dog her. Okay. Not her daughter, like a human being, but her doctor. Because people look, I'm not a pet person. I'm not at all. We I've had uh, I think we had a cat when I was younger, and I think the lady on the corner who we think was a witch stole my cat. I don't know, but as a kid, there was a, there was a white lady who lived on the corner, who we the older kids always told us she was a witch, and our cat disappeared, and we just assumed the witch took the cat. Anyway, uh, we had two dogs when I was a maybe a teenager or whatever. One dog died and hit by a car. The other dog we gave away. So we're, me, I'm not really a dog person. However, I am fully aware that people who have pets look at their pets as their, their kids. Especially people who do not have children. A lot of people who do not have kids and they have these dogs who they treat as children look at them as their, you know, their pet children. You know, and having a pet for 13 years, you, I fully, fully get. So Tiffany is grieving the loss of her 13-year-old dog that she called her doctor. Now, when she mentioned it, because she was like, I'm grieving. I've gained weight because I've been, you know, grief eating or whatever. I'm going to some health retreat after this and blah, 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 blah. But she was saying how, you know, it was, you know she's been grieving the loss of her doctor. Because if she kept on saying my child. Now, because no one know her, they thinking, oh, she her kid died. And so Jocelyn, oh, your daughter your daughter died. Cause <laughs> Tiffany fully spoke about the kid as if it was a human. 
period. You know, it, there was not ever a point in where she, there, no, I take that back. There was a time, she did specify at one point it was a dog, just not to Amber, not to her, not to uh, Jocelyn. I was thirsty. So, Jocelyn gave her a hug. I'm so sorry for your loss. You know what I'm saying? Blah, 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 blah. So, when Jocelyn mentions to Parker, hey, did you know that Tiffany's daughter died? And she said, no, not her daughter. Like, her dog her. So, P Parker pronounced it the right, like, her dog her. It was her dog. Which then pissed Jocelyn off. I don't understand why Jocelyn was upset about it. I get if she was confused, like, oh, I thought this. But Jocelyn was upset as if Tiffany was around here collecting donations for a human being and not just telling people that she was grieving because her pet died. Okay, so to me, Jocelyn being extra, extra, it's just how Jocelyn is, aggravating, irritating, get on all our nerves, okay? So she then goes to basically check Tiffany, and I'm like, why the fuck for? Why the fuck for? And Jocelyn, like, you know, I'm pissed because you was up and upset over oh, well, dead dog. It's a dog. It's a dog. Okay, I don't understand that type of love. I would never have a. I would. She said I would have never gave you a dog. You no, know, she said I would have never gave you a hug if I knew you was grieving the dog. I'm like, girl. So as she's talking and saying like, and you, who? Why get a dog if a dog died? It was. I'm like, who says when someone is telling you that they are grieving the loss of their pet? Just okay, accept it and walk away. But Jocelyn felt the need to fuss and argue with her. And now they fussing. And what I respect about Tiffany was Tiffany did not back down at all. Okay. Tiffany, you're gonna you gonna, you gonna catch these hands. Okay. Wait, y'all. Take one second and like the damn video. Like the video. Had to get some water anyway. Tiffany, like, look, first of all, you know what I'm saying? That was like my child, and if you don't get that, that's fine. But what you won't do is put me in a position to have to defend myself and how I feel about my dog, okay? Flat the fuck out, okay? I have the right to feel how I feel, and I will not explain myself to you, okay? And Tiffany said, I feel like Jonathan's been a bully, and I ain't gonna deal with it, okay? That was my child, and can't nobody tell me different. And I said, look, I would never fuss or argue with anyone, excuse me, with anyone about their pet. I just won't do it because it's senseless. Like what human being doesn't understand somebody love they pet? I feel like didn't Jocelyn have a dog? Didn't she have a pet? I feel like on some show, either on 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 the the, the cabaret people or the, the love. I feel like we've seen Jocelyn with a dog. So how do you not understand people loving the pet? I'm so confused. Now, at this point, Tiffany is bawling, crying, because she's that upset. Go! Leave here. You know what I'm saying? She's, girl, my hair, was, my hair just scared the shit out of me because on my arm. Oh, Jesus. But <laughs> Tiffany is bawling, crying, saying, that was my child. And can't nobody tell me. Because she's telling you I'm grieving and I'm sad because my dog died. And Josh is trying to argue as if she don't have the right to be sad about a dead dog. So Josh and then say, okay, what can I do to help? And I say, girl, nothing. Get the fuck out. And Tiffany said, in this moment, please, can you just leave the room? Okay. Now, 
Tiffany, in my opinion, was, again, real tame. She was emotional, but she wasn't all like, I'm going to beat your ass, okay? And then Josh, I'm like, why? But why? Now I feel like you playing me, okay? I'm trying to understand your situation. I gave, I gave you a hug last night. She said, no, you told me you took the hug back, okay? You already gave me all you have, okay? You trying to hurt me while I'm up and grieving, okay? Leave me be. Just leave. You're trying to hurt me. She had a full-blown, just emotional outburst. Because Jocelyn is still questioning, girl, it's a dog. It's a dog. Now they fussing back and forth. Uh, Jocelyn called her bitch. Don't call me no bitch. Don't call me no bitch. Don't call me no girl. I'm like, Lord. Again, they had, they was in each other's faces. Don't call me no bitch. Do not call me no bitch. Okay? Whatever. Okay? Whatever. And... When Jocelyn said, you need to see a doctor, you need to go to a doctor, you need a therapist because, you know, you should never have that type of energy about a dog. And I'm like, see, that's your problem. Don't, I, Jocelyn don't know love. She don't. Okay? And Tiffany's like, I'm not going to let anybody, you know, make me feel bad for how I feel about my dog. Leave me alone. Now, at some point, a mind came in, but people, uh, uh, a mind came in, I think Orion came in, and kind of, it, it, it seemed like it was a bigger argument that they had to, you know, get them separated, get them separated or whatever. And so, a mind takes Jocelyn downstairs, and look, he like, look, I get it. You know, he said, I thought she meant a child, too. I didn't know she meant a child. I get it. And I think that was, that was his way of saying, if maybe if somebody agreed with Jocelyn, She'll calm the fuck down. So I do feel like he calmed her down because she didn't need people to agree with her. And that's it. Okay. I'm gonna leave that be. Now, because Josh was so so pissed, she then goes and she locks herself in the room. Now, Jocelyn and Parker share a room. They show Jocelyn when in that room at around 4 30. Jocelyn locked that door for hours. And Parker could not get in the room. Parker was at the door knocking to get in, and Jocelyn was just ignoring her. So they show a few times of her going back and forth trying to get into her own room while Jocelyn is just in there being a bitch for hours. I wish, first of all, after the, the first time I went to get in my room and I couldn't, and I politely knocked, and she opened the door, and then I banged on the door, and she opened the door. At that point, production is telling me they want me to break down the door. Okay? If I if my stuff is in there and I can't get to my stuff and you in there and you will not open the door and product, the production won't either. Okay. Well, if y'all want a door destroyed, cool. Cool. I can hear the hint. Jay Lee, break the door down because that's what would have happened. Ain't no way I would have just walked away and left her in there with my stuff and her ignoring me for getting in my room. Anyway, we then see all the other ones outside talking. They want to have a house meeting because Jocelyn is on some bullshit. Everyone recognizes she's been extra, extra because she here thinking she the HBIC and not knowing ain't nobody standing for that, okay? We're going to have a whole conversation because it's, it's team too much. Now, Parker come back out and said, well, you guys, hi, how should I, you know, discuss, you know, her locking me out the room? I can't get in my room. It's been hours or whatever, and I, like, I don't know what to do. So she's asking the other people for advice on how to handle the way they've all been seeing Joss's ass act. And Ray say, well, okay, we'll have a whole house meeting. And... Um, we will, you know, we'll, we'll ask for everyone to be respectful, okay? Well, because he's a Jonathan been, been, been extra, and she got to calm down. I know that. And, you know, we can have that conversation. So when he goes to the door and knocks on the door, she opens it. Okay, he like, look, we're going to have a, a, a house meeting. Uh, we got to get some things, you know, squared away or whatever, um, you know, because er everybody feels kind of way, you know, Parker feels like she can't, uh, get in her room. What? So, so, so she my roommate, 
and she talking to y'all about me? She can, she can, I'm like, you didn't answer the, the fact that she sank. This is like night two. Okay. The fact that she feel like Parker should have came and talked to her. When we seen Parker knocking on the door and you not answering how it made me mad. And Ray J kept saying, well, no, no, no. She, no, it was, we were all talking, but now she upset. Josh Snow punk ass come to the meeting dressed like in a Fendi girl hoodie or whatever, or her do rag on, um, like she's a prisoner of the Fendi store. And she's like, wow, y'all all all attacking me, and my you, my ex roommate, you can't be in my room no more because you are being you being sneaky, you ain't shit. I'm like, what now? Parker get pissed, like, I ain't did shit, but I was. Talking to the to the people here about what's going on because you would not open the door. Okay, so Parker gets up and walks away. And she's pissed because in her eyes, I ain't did shit. You mad because you was fussing with Tiffany? You then locked me out of my room and gonna try and tell me that I can't sleep in our room? Fuck you. <laughs> okay. Jocelyn is completely full of shit. Jocelyn is completely deranged. Jocelyn really thinks this is the Jocelyn show. And what she's going to learn is ain't nobody around here kissing your ass and no one around here needs you. Because on one level or the other, all of them are just as successful, if not more, than Jocelyn. Period. She not on this show, she ain't the main star. You may be the main star on Jocelyn's Cabaret on Zeus, which is a discount, and everything. You ain't the star here, ma'am. Shut your ass up, okay? And it went off. Honey, it's a foolishness to me. Complete foolishness. Now I have to watch episode two, and now I'll get back to y'all. You know, probably later on the day or on Monday. Because I don't know. I don't know. This is Sunday around 5 p.m. I'm finna, I'm about to watch Love and Rage Huntsville. So that review, whenever y'all see this, I'm pretty sure my Love and Rage Huntsville review will, will already be up. However, but be sure to look out for uh, the episode two review this as well. I gotta go. Okay. I love you all. Have a good day. Please be sure to do a couple of things. Subscribe to my channel. Like the video. Comment in the comment section. Follow me on social media at Jamie's Corner on IG, Twitter, and TikTok. But I gotta go. I love you all. Have a good day.